Hello, and welcome to Analysis with me, Oliver McTernan. It's three years today since the overthrow of the Ben Ali regime in Tunisia, and the country is still in a state of political transition. Although Tunisia has held democratic elections, accusations of incompetence and political violence has led to the agreed resignation of Prime Minister Ali Larayed in favour of a caretaker government. An economic crisis and an increasingly harsh police response to demonstrations has led some to question if the first and so far most successful of the Arab Spring countries may also be starting to break down. Here's Flaminia Jambalov with more. Today marks a three-year anniversary since the onset of the Tunisian uprisings, which led to the departure of former president Zine El Abdin Ben Ali on January 14th. In Tunis, the capital, this date was commemorated by a number of events and demonstrations taking place on Bourguiba Avenue in downtown Tunis. This main street was the setting for the January 2011 mass protests. Against this backdrop of protests and popular discontent, Tunisia's new Prime Minister, Mehdi Joma, took office on Friday after the ruling Islamist Premier resigned. Joma will lead a caretaker government until elections this year. The government will be composed not only for national technocrat. This will be the primary criteria, but also of independence. The Al Nakhda party has been struggling to ensure that what happened to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt does not happen in Tunisia. Nonetheless, the transitional process in Tunisia has been hailed by commentators as the most peaceful and democratic in the MENA region. The President of the Republic has asked me to take care of the country's affairs in the interim, as the resigning government, according to our law, has the same prerogatives for the period until the new government is set up by my brother Mehdi Joma, and with God's will, it will be accepted by the National Constituent Assembly shortly. Last week, Tunisia voted to enshrine gender equality in its draft constitution, a key step towards safeguarding its relatively progressive laws on women's rights. My evaluation of the constitution is that despite the fact that the Tunisian people have been criticizing the NCA a lot because we see all this chaos and absence of the members at the assembly, it still has the potential to produce the best constitution in the Arab world. However, the new government will have to deal not only with political grievances, but also with the economic issues which have continued to cause discontent throughout the past three years. Everyone fears the future. You cannot know what will happen in one year, two years or even ten years. Flaminia Giambalvo, Islam Channel. Well, joining me in the studio to discuss this is Mamoun Alabasi, a journalist and political commentator, James Schneider, the editor of Think Africa Press, and joining us by Skype from Turkey is Yasmin Ryan, a journalist with Al Jazeera, and by phone from Doha, we have Dr. Nuruddin Miladi, head of the Department of Mass Communications, Qatar University. Welcome. Mahmoud, will this change of government result in any significant difference in the country? Uh, it's already a very uh, positive development. To begin, to begin with, the fact that it happened is something positive. Um, there were attempts, I mean, if, if this deadlock continued, uh, during the attempts to uh, overthrow the democratically elected government, then we would have seen the end of democracy in Tunisia altogether. So the fact that people came to an agreement and have this consensus in itself is uh, is a positive thing. Um, I think the pragmatic or the pragmatic uh, the pragmats in the another government saw that they were faced between two options. They could behave as the winners of an electoral uh, victory and um, and carry on the same way, and as a result maybe um, lose the whole power altogether, or they could make a concession and accept. Um, some of the demands of the opposition, even though the opposition were the electoral losers, but they thought, let's share some of that now, so we can live to, uh, uh, you know, to fight another fight in the future. We'll remain on the political scene. Uh, this is good. I mean, I know it's not really 100% fair for the for the purest um, socially, uh, the conservative socially branch of the um, 
of the of Al Nahda because they will see well why did we go to elections and why did we win elections if we're going to carry out the the agenda of the or the plans of the opposition. Nouridine, um would you think it was fair that the rightfully elected government stood down in order to make room for a caretaker government in the run-up to the new elections? Well, maybe at this minute um, uh, of time it is the right move because, um, uh, to some extent, uh, political um, um, uh, life in, in the country uh, is, is, is kind of um, coming to a deadlock between um, a, a, um, a Troika coalition government that is trying to move ahead with its plans to um, implement the um, aims of the revolution and, uh, and an, an opposition, in a way, um, that is um, doing its best um, to put all kinds of obstacles. I think the, um, uh, for an elected government to step down from power, uh, obviously it is historical in an, in an Arab country, let alone in um, other parts of the world. Uh, I think this is this is probably um, a credit that um, is, is, is to be given to uh, to Anahda and its uh, and its coalition, because um, uh, in a way um, the 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 the, the, um, um, the the people of Tunisia elected them uh, very very clearly uh, in, in a kind of um, um, a good majority on the 23rd of, of, of October 20, um, uh, uh, 2012. Uh, here they are stepping down. Um, obviously, um, I, I, I think this, this is, at least for the moment, has, has, has eased up the situation in the country. And um, uh, I've, 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 I've seen today, for example, uh, Qaeda Sibsi, who is one of the major figures in the, in the, in the opposition, um, happy to deal with the, uh, the interim government, with the, the government of um, uh, Mahdi, uh, Mahdi Bujuma. Um, I'm hoping that, um, uh, I mean, the, 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 the extreme uh, opposition, which is um, uh, on the left, and, and also the, the government and the other opposition parties, I think, uh, will work together towards the um, uh, preparation for the next elections. And I think that will be probably the hallmark of um, what's going to happen in the next uh, probably six months or eight months before, um, uh, before the end of 20, uh, 2014. James, what would you see to be the cause of this current crisis? I don't really think it is a crisis. What you've seen for the last three years in Tunisia, but especially um, since the elections in October 2011, is a kind of ongoing negotiation about what society should look like and who should rule it. And nobody has really had the outright authority to stamp what they want on society. I mean, it, al Nadir did win an election, but it didn't win a majority. It won 40 percent, which is why it's in a coalition government. So I think that rather than, you know, looking at this and saying, oh, well, there's a crisis because not everyone agrees, what we've got is an entirely new situation that happened after Ben Ali was overthrown. And um, no one's quite clear about what kind of society and what kind of governance the country is going to have. And that needs to be negotiated. And it's been negotiated through lots of different forms, including the Constitutional Assembly, but also the government and also on the streets. And this is the kind of, um, a kind of mature outcome of that. I, sh I don't think it should be really seen as a crisis at all. Crisis. But Yasmin, um, would you say these negotiations that James spoke of are between two groups that represent different ideas of how a country should be ruled, be it a secular or with a religious influence? Or do you see it more as the um, old guard, if you like, rejecting the new, new um, elected um, government? Uh, I, I think it's it's a bit more complicated than just the simple secular Islamist equation. Mm -hmm. um, for one thing, within the Troika, you have uh, Ita Capital, which is a socialist party, um, although obviously many of their members have quit. Um, and then in the opposition, you do have some, m many members who who described as the old political elite, but you also have the left, um, the popular front, um, and people a lot of people who are also um, opponents of the Ben Ali regime um, and have concerns of their own. And it's true, most of the secularist parties have united together, but but some of these alliances are, are quite strange. Um, so it's probably, it, it definitely has, the debate has turned around the secularist Islamist um, question. Um, but then on economy, for instance, um, you've got liberals um, with Marxists um, and, and all everything in between. So 
I think that is unfortunate for the country um, because it means there hasn't been much um, economic debate because all of the alliance, the, the main debate has been over secularism Islam, um, and Islamism. Are you so, confident as to the future of democracy in Tunisia? Um, I, I don't think, I think the transition is going to be a very long process. Um, and we've, the, the elections in 2011 were for the Constituent Assembly, so it's really for the first stage. So it's for writing the Constitution and setting up the framework um, and the elections that we're looking to have. Um, late this year. Those will be the first presidential and parliamentary elections. So it's really still emerging. But I, I do think most people um, really do want democracy to succeed. It's just a matter of the nature of that democracy debate, such as whether the presidency has all the power or the parliament has all the power are quite crucial. Um, for instance, Anata is quite can be quite confident in the future that it will secure a large um, voice in the parliament, so it's tended to favour that model. Um, yeah, so, so there's some pretty big questions that, that are still up in the air. Um, but I think, obviously, if you compare it to any other country in the region, Tunisia is the only country that's really on a, a positive um, path towards democracy. Um, Nuruddin, there seems to be more consensus in Tunisia than we witnessed in, in Egypt over what should be in the Constitution. Would you agree with that? Um, well, not really, to be honest, because, um, I mean, we can, we can witness the tension, especially when the time came with regard to voting. Um, uh, lots of, uh, lots of um, 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 uh, disagreement with regard to the detail, especially, for instance, from the beginning or from the outset with regard to the... Um, uh, the identity of the of the country, the uh, religion of the country, whether it is uh, whether Islam is a religion of the state or it is a religion of Tunisians or what? Uh, I, I, I mean, I mean, yes, um, um, the, the, there is so far a consensus within or, or somehow within the constituent assembly, but when we speak about the opposition mm. parties, for example, and the way. Um, they wish to uh, tailor a constitution that is probably part of their um, uh, agenda. Uh, I would I would say that uh, no. I think Tunisians are split to, uh, uh, to 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 some extent with regard to how they want the constitution to be. Um, now the uh, the run up to what is happening now. I mean the debate about the constitution and the and the and the and the voting in the constituent assembly. I think the culmination of lost debates in the in the press, in magazines, on radio stations, on television screens, and so forth during the last um, many months in in, uh, 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 in 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 the course of the um, um, the ruling of this of this government. I think um, uh, the, the Constituent Assembly is succeeding now, in my opinion, to a large extent to make this happen, this historical moment, which is um, to, to, to make a constitution after 50 years of uh, a country being ruled and led by uh, a constitution that is written by, uh, in, in, in a way, by a party. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm really hoping, although there is a kind of uh, lots of tension um, within it or leading up to it, but um, mm -hmm. it's going to happen and it's going to take um, place, hopefully. Thanks, sir. M M Mahmoud, um, the gap between the members of the Assembly and their constituency? Um, well, uh, they've been getting lots of negative press, unfortunately, from uh, opposition or, or, or anti-government uh, media outlets. Even though the, the majority of the members of parliament that are elected on, on behalf of the, part of the government are the ones who always are present, always take part, but the members of parliament that the few that belong to the opposition, they are forever absent, they are forever delayed at this court, on which of the assembly were in. The press, the media, have they played a negative role? I don't think that you can say they've played a negative role. I mean, the Tunisian uh, media landscape has changed dramatically since the fall of Ben Ali, which you know, ran a very censored uh, press with a state censor and copy had to be sent to them. So there's been you know, a lot of new, uh, you know, new media coming out and uh, a lot of innovation. And of course, within that, some of that has been 
firmly tied to certain political figures or political parties, and occasionally the, the discourse and the debate has been um, pretty unhelpful. But it's coming from a position of um, you know, large state censorship and state control. So within that context, I think it, you can say it's, it's developed, if I just developing. Can make a please. comment just. With, mm. uh, you're, you're right in the sense that it's no, no more, there's no more censorship mm. and, and more uh, new players have come to exist. But the, unlike the, the government or the members of parliament, um, the, the, the people at the top of the old media uh, outlets mm. were, were uh, promoted by the old regimes. Mm. So when democracy came, they didn't change that. It didn't change the corrupt uh, judiciary, for example. It didn't change the corrupt civil service. So the government had a problem with dealing with the old rooted uh, corruption uh, and all those figures that were promoted by Ben Ali or even Bourguiba. For exactly, them. which yeah. is the same problem as is, um, as you say, in civil service and yeah. throughout politics and throughout societies. That, that you can't have this immediate radical That's break. True. There's That's been. True. Uh, there was a break, lots of people were kicked out, some people stayed and their powers returned. And it's a negotiated, it's a negotiated movement in all sectors of society. Yasmin, a quick word on the media. We've just got a few seconds left in this half. Quick word. Uh, well, I think it's definitely true that the media has been very partisan and that's true on, on all different sides. Um, um, and so... And I, I do think that hasn't always been helpful. Um, also, in, in provoking the secularist versus Islamist um, debates, when when people feel they can't trust journalists, yes, when, when we, every journalist. Sorry to intrude on you. We'll have to leave it there as we're out of time in this section of the programme. I do hope you will stay with us and rejoin the debate in the next part of the programme. Thank you.